So the Mattachine Society was actually founded in the 1950s by a gentleman called Harry Hayes. And it sort of has a, uh, um, a chapter-like structure or a cell-like structure, if you will. Um, that sort of there are different chapters all across the uh, the country, really, with different sort of missions. And I think it's still it was sort of the oldest gay rights organization in the country. And I think it's still relevant today because I think sometimes we uh, in this whole sort of euphoric um, sort of uh, current of marriage equality and all these kinds of gay rights victories, we some, sometimes tend to fall into a very uh, progressive narrative. And I think it's important to also remember the victories that haven't been won yet and all the ways in which those so-called victories are uh, constantly challenged at the local as well as on the federal level. Mattachine gave us, uh, a, a, you know, their focus now is on legal and policy history. What they're really wanting to look at and document uh, is the histories of discrimination and how that's worked in various states. Um, so they're kind of like seeding, like Johnny Appleseed through, you know, in terms of all this, you know, seeding uh, this kind of work in, in a variety of states. We're one of them. What sparked my interest in this is that uh, while there's been some work done on Virginia in terms of sexuality, uh, not a lot of work done on LBGTIQ um, folks, right, or lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, intersex, um, queer and questioning. Um, um, so, uh, and, and that in terms of the broader field, I'm, I'm a historian by training, so in terms of the broader field of history of sexuality and LGBTIQ history, um, what you see is um, a, lot of, a lot of work done on cities and a lot of work done on the north and occasional and cities in the Midwest, Chicago, um, some work done, you know, work done on the California coast, you know, that sort of thing. Not a lot of work done on the southeast. Specifically for this semester, we're sort of uh, looking at um, a, 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 a range of topics, specifically three topics. One of them are called the ABC laws. Um, so um, in the aftermath of the Stonewall Rebellion in 1969, the Alcoholic Beverage Control um, Committee uh, passed a number of laws that would prevent the sale of alcohol and the congregation of known homosexuals, as they were uh, called at the time, and would prevent them from coming together. Our goal is like, you know, that this is going to be a long-term long ongoing project, and, and, and it will make all kinds of, uh, of sort of rich um, uh, information about LGBTIQ people's lives. Uh, you know, after World War II in the 60s, 70s, again, long time ago, but nonetheless, really, really critical to where we are now. Um, make it available so students, um, uh, you know, folks who aren't at the college, people in the community. Well, I would hope that uh, making this information public will increase awareness um, about LGBTQ history in the Commonwealth of Virginia and also place uh, the work that we're doing in the context of the work that's been already been done at the college in terms of uh, certainly LGBTIQ rights, um, in terms of non-discrimination policy, and in terms of everything that sort of affected uh, the lives of LGBTIQ students, staff, and faculty at the college. We, we very much want to, um, inter this is, we, we want to have student, re student students, undergraduate students, give opportunities for research in terms of this, but also really engaging with the community around it so that, so that this is, so the research, one of our goals is, is eventually to have that research be presented, so, so uh, uh, through exhibits at the library, but also to, through symposia so that we can get the broader Williamsburg community involved, um, you know, in, in ways with the college and not the town and gown, which I'm sorry, I shouldn't say this, town and gown, which is kind of stuffy, but rather, you know, look what we found and, and can you believe this and what do you think, you know, because I think we're going to find some surprising things. I'm very looking forward, to, very much looking forward to uh, the work that's ahead, thinking about is it how to best incorporate the re research that the students will be doing with their own individual interests and their own investments in the project. Because that really, that's the best kind of research when people have a personal kind of investment in the work that's, that usually yields the best results. I mean, when I was a student, um, and I know that was years ago, years ago, so it's maybe it's completely different. Um, but when I was a student, um, there was something so, um, I don't know, exciting, energizing to, uh, to be part of 
of, of something that was new and 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 just and hadn't been done before and um, and so I'm hoping I'm hoping there'll be a similar kind of excitement about that here. You know, we're we're moving William Mary moving slowly glacially into the you know late 20th early 21st century, and I think this project is something that will help us get there.